hey guys so let's create a new nest.js project so to create a new nest.js project what you need to do is you need to install the CLI so we can do this by saying npm install dash g at nest.js slash CLI let's copy this over and install this I'm opening my terminal by saying control tilde uh, let's install this CLI globally so npm install dash g nest.js slash CLI Okay, seems like I have I need to specify sudo so to create a new project we we can see by seeing nest nest new and the project name so over here I've opened up this new folder called voting app so I'll create a new project nest new and call the project name server because we are essentially creating a server here. So I'll be using yarn as my package manager. So before getting into things let's understand a few core concepts about nest.js so every application has a root module called application module so you can see here if you take a look in the server folder being created for us by nest.js you can see under sources so every application has something called root module so over here it's called application module so over here these are the properties defined for a module over here you can see the, these are the four properties defined for a module in providers controllers imports and exports so the controller here specifically means if you take a look in the app.controller you can see uh, it's a get method and a specific kind of function is getting called whenever you go to the root get method over here if you don't say anything in the get method it means it's going to the path root path so over here if you take a look if you start the if you start our server start dev I need to change my directory to server first then we have to start a server I'm start dev I'm getting that um, script from our package.json if you take a look in our package.json you can see these are the script given by given to us by nest.js so if you say start.dev um, you don't really have to keep restarting your server again and these are the different scripts given for us to like for example you can start a production ready application here or you can pre-start a production ready or you can lint by using uh, the lint script linting by tslint and here our, um, um, our nest.js application has been started for us so here as I said um, here they have specified a get method a get is a rest api method for uh, no, HTTP, http method so here if you go to our local host 3000 here you can see it says hello world so this hello world is coming from here you said here it says it's a get method so get method is calling a function called hello world and it returns a string and this is getting dependency injected by app.service so what I what I wanted to explain you guys was here as you can see the controller is the method that we need to call and the providers are the services or the functions or help functions being created and you can specify in the providers for example you have 
application servers and you can specify any providers have um, having an application service so over here you can see um, the app module you can see the providers is using an application service if you take a look in the app dot service you can see this is the get hello function the application service and it returns a string saying hello world and in our app dot controller you can see here this get hello world function is being called over here and this is what is getting executed over here in our localhost 3000 so what essentially we'll be doing we won't be following through um, we won't be mainly doing a REST API, we'll be installing GraphQL. So to install GraphQL, you can come down here under the GraphQL tab. And let's install all these libraries for an SDS to support GraphQL. So I'll stop my server by saying Control C. And so let's say on add. So add is for installing or else you can say npm install dash dash save and I'll paste the libraries that I've copied over so if you go back here they have shown us what to do next over here we will be mainly focusing for generating our SDL so you can do that by following the code first method so we need to install type graphql as well so let's do that by saying on add type graphql and to generate or to specify what what's the file name we have to generate we need to specify or to schema file over here so let's copy this over so under our application module in our imports we'll say and let's import this graphql module it's coming from at sj slash graphql Uh, let's start by creating our first resolver so let's copy this resolver resolver over and um, nest.js essentially gives us this CLI tool called nest so we can create um, create a module so we'll be creating this resolver under user module so let's create a new module called user module so we can do that by saying nest new I mean nest generate g for generate what we'll be creating is a module so we'll say module and the name of the module is user so if you take a look over here the user module is imported automatically for us and a new folder has been created called users I mean user and the root module name is user module and over here you can see so what you need to do is uh, as we have installed type graphql let's copy this resolver over and also we can generate a resolver file as well using the nest CLI. so we can do that by saying nest generate a resolver r R for resolver or you can type in resolver and user and we'll say dash dash no spec so no spec is for not creating a test file and here you can see the user resolver is it's another kind of service that's been imported so it comes under providers and here you can see the user resolver file created for us so we'll post this resolver that we have copied over from STS docs so we won't be needing all this so we'll do a query first 
simple describe from nest.js graphql so what essentially we will be returning is a, a string so we will just write a hello world query let's call this function hello world hello and we don't essentially have any arguments in our query and let's return hello world so let's start our server again now start dev okay so our server has been started so let's take a look in the graphql playground We'll do that by saying look close 3000 slash graphql so essentially what playground is we, uh, you don't really need a front end to call call in the graphql um, so you can see here i've written out a query or or else you can write it out by yourself so, so what you what we essentially did was we created a query so we'll type in query and we'll type in the query name so hello and we'll press the play button and as you can see here our return data hello and there seems to be two errors so these errors, I guess it's coming from uh, the types library that has been imported in our dev dependency. So we can essentially ignore uh, library checks by saying in our ts config skip lib check. Let's restart our server again. Okay, now it says um, found zero errors. Let's check if the hello string works again. No query. Seems to work fine. So that is it, guys. For the next video, we'll be setting up type ORM. So the type ORM is essentially talk to our database using object relation modeling so thank you guys for watching